Welcome to this episode of Chatting with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today I got Jack O'Halloran. And you're not going to ask me about my father? Uh, do I look like a fellow of a turnip truck? And I, I got up and I said, I really appreciate the offer, but thanks, but no thanks. And I left and Mitch was screaming at me. Why are you crazy? He said, Hollywood loves that kind of stuff. They ate that up. What's the matter with you? I said, Robert, you got a big mouth. You told this guy everything about me. He said, Jack, this is Hollywood. This is not, you know, I said, there's so many years. I said, that was a foolish mistake. But, you know, you don't cry over spell mode. Looking back, though, would you have done it now? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd have done it in a heartbeat. That was a dumb mistake. I could have won an Oscar. Because uh, it's a great, I don't know, if you never saw Fair with my love. You should look at it. It's a great film. It really yeah. is a good movie. I'm going to check it out. And, and, I, and it worked for me terrifically. I mean, Mitch and I were, it was great chemistry. It worked. It was really worked well. So then I did King Kong and I did start doing one good movie after another. And, uh, so like right three, after Farewell, my, my lovely is King Kong right at, right away. Did after? King Kong, did King Kong, since Farewell come out, I was offered King Kong and then I was, uh, then I think, let me see what I did. King Kong, and I did The Baltimore Bullet with Jimmy Coburn and Omar Sharif. Uh, I, and Bruce Boxleitner's first picture. And I just went on and did one picture after another. Uh, did a, few, a few television. I really like TV, but the first picture television thing I did was Canon, Bill Conrad. And he was good friends with Mitchum. And uh, Mitchum called me on the phone. He said, Bill Conrad wants you do that show with him. He said, I said, Rob, well, that's, that's television. He said, do it. I said, okay. So I did. And I, um, you know, but the, when I turned down, when I turned down the Great White Hope, the, uh, I was leaving Fox Studio and James Earl Jones was coming up the steps when I was walking down and he stopped me and he said, you're Jack O'Hallor. And I said, yeah, you're James Earl Jones. He said, <laughs> he said is it true what I just heard about you? I said, I, I don't know. What'd you hear? He said, I heard you just told Hollywood to take the biggest movie out here and stick it. I said, well, I guess you could say that. He said, I got to shake your hand. I never met anybody that did that before. And we became pretty good friends. He's, he was a good guy. I like James. James. So once, once you start into the movie career, are you meeting a lot of actors? Who Who's some of the memorable people that you well, met that you got, put an you, impact on you? you got, when I did Farewell, My, My Lovely, we had Charlotte Rampling, John Ireland, Harry Dean Stanton, Anthony Zerby, who was a brilliant actor. It was a great cast. So you're, you're in, And Stallone had a small part of the movie. In fact, Stallone... Stallone came out with a guy named Joe uh, Joe Spinelli. Joe Spinelli was a was an actor in New York, and he brought like four actors out to fill out different character roles, you know. And Stallone was one of them. And he was doing he was writing a boxing movie, and he sat down and picked my brain every day about boxing. And I was the gangster fighter from Philadelphia who had I was signed to fight Ali four times. And he just kept talking to me about fights and boxing and everything else. And he wrote the story rock. That was my life he wrote about. Wow. He'd never been to Philadelphia. He was no gangster. He was a punk kid. 
So I, then I just laughed like, oh. But, but, uh, <laughs> where was where was Stallone from? He was he lived in Florida. He went to school in Switzerland. His mother was married to a wise guy, and he was uh, he was educated over in uh, in Switzerland. And his, his mother lived down in Florida. And he was he was originally from uh, New York, I think. But he, he didn't you know his mother well, like I said, mother married a wise guy. And, Moved out yeah. of Florida. He was he went to school and, and he uh, so he asked me all about the unions and the waterfront and everything else. And, and uh, next thing I know, he's doing a movie called Rock. And made me laugh like hell. Oh. He didn't but, ask you to be a part of that one. No, no, no. He was a uh, no. You could have you could have been the. Um... The Russian guy or something, right? <laughs> no, nah, but you know, it's just uh, I was too busy. I was, you know, I was working all the time and doing. And you know, when you you like, I did the Baltimore Bullet had Omar Sharif, who's a fantastic guy. Jimmy Coburn, Jimmy Coburn was a hell of a guy, and we had like a lot of great talent. I worked with, you know. Yeah. And then I did Hero and the Terror with Chuck Norris. And, um, well, I had a lot of fun. Then we did Superman and became iconic actors. Superman 1 and Superman 2 were, were their iconic films. I mean, here we are 47 years later, and it's still a big-time movie. You know what I mean? It's huge. It's a, probably one of the biggest movies of all times. So. Yeah, so it worked out really well. You know, and, uh, when the Donner Cut came back out, and they had, uh, which is better than the Lester Cut. That's... Yeah. Uh, so it's the memorabilia is, is there. And uh, now I wrote a couple of books. I'm getting ready to make a mini series with uh, Family Legacy. And uh, everybody's excited about that. So it's uh, it's been a great ride. You know, I've met a lot of good people. I worked with, I mean, you work with Brent. We did Superman. You had Brando, Terrence. Stamp was the hottest, it was one of the best actors in London. If you ever watched Superman 1 and when we, they had the, when we're on trial and all those people saying guilty, 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 they had some of the greatest English actors doing a cameo. Harry Anderson, Trevor Howard. I mean, some great actors that took part in the Superman movie just to do a cameo. It's wild. Yeah. I so mean, what, what, how? What was your life? How did it change after you were featured in Superman? Was it was it a lot different from before? Well, you know, I I had already put myself into a great script when I was doing King Kong. I, I wrote a great script. There was a movie that was done in the 30s called The Informer. Victor McLaughlin and John Ford directed it at one four Oscars. It was a great story. And the writer of the book, Liam O'Flaherty, and I became friends and he told me the original story. And I wrote a great script. And I wrote a song called Ballad of the Simple Man and Elton John recorded it. The song he recorded was Simple Man. And we're going to use it for the film. I was going to do the film and because was, I was going to do the McLaughlin role. It was, it was an Oscar shot. It was great. It's a great script. I'm still going to wind up doing it, I think. And it's, uh, so, so I I didn't have an agent when I did Farewell, my lovely. And after it came out, I, I told I went over to Mitchum's house, and I said, uh, I think it's time I get an agent. And he pointed to the phone book. I said, well, what's the deal? He said, Phone book's full of agents. He said, if you think I'm going to give you an agent and he doesn't work out for you and you're going to get mad and come back and yell at me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like he's going to be responsible, right? So I got this guy, Meyer Mishkin, who represented Lee Marvin and Richard Dreyfuss and a lot of people. And he, uh, I went to see him and he wasn't signing anybody. And Lee Marvin said, if you don't take this kid on, I'll come leave the agency. He's a hell of an actor. So I wound up with Meyer Michigan and, and I went to Mitchum and I said, well, I'm signed up with Meyer Michigan. He said, it couldn't be a better guy. Just good, great guy for you. I said, well, you could have helped me out and told me that in the first place. And 
uh, you know, when they they came to me to do the Bond movie, and I turned it down. <laughs> I was doing a picture called March or Die down in, in uh, I was doing a picture called March or Die down in Spain with Gene Hackman and Catherine Deneuve and Max Mesidal, Ian Holm, great cast. It's a great war epic picture and foreign legion movie. And uh, when I was doing that, they came to me to do uh, the Bond movie. I was I just signed to do March or Die, and I said. Well, Told my agent, I said, Well, we just signed to do March of Dying. I said, Well, we can get out of that picture if you want to go and do this, do this bond picture. They really want you. Cubby Broccoli flew over from LA and they begged me to please do the picture. And I said, I just signed to do a picture. And I, you know, Hackman's a good guy. And blah, blah, blah. And it's a good thing I did because when I was down there doing that picture, we were offered Superman. And Gene so and I went up to, uh, to London to meet Richard Donner. And uh, Donner said to me, how do you feel about doing a mute guy? Because the character, Nan, was a major scientist, and they lobotomized him because he was hanging around with Zod. So that was his punishment. And I said, I embrace it. He said, what are you talking about? I said, well, Jackie Gleason was a friend of mine, and he did a picture called Gigo. And he won an Oscar for it, playing a deaf, dumb mute. I said, if I ever got a chance to do a, pit, a role like that, I would embrace it to be able to use body language and facial expression. And I said, this is a perfect role because General Zod is a vicious general. Sarah, who played Ursa, was a man eater. Somebody, man -eater. Had, to, <laughs> somebody had to portray a child because it's a children's movie. So I said, I'm going to take this big brutish guy and play him like a child, learning how to work my eyes and learning how to do things. And, and he said, wow, what a great idea. And so it worked out very well. You know, and I, I did this, I did non the character non like a, a child, you know, that, uh, and related to children, related to young kids. I mean, I have so many people come up to me at comic cons and stuff and say, God, your character scared to death of me, but I love your character because I was like a child acting, you know? Yeah. And it worked out very well. And you're like, thank you. And they're like, you can talk. Oh, my God. You know, somebody actually said that yeah. to me. Yeah. First time I went to a Comic-Con, I was sitting there, and a the guy came up and he started rabbiting. Da, da, da. And I said, wow, thanks for coming. He said, you can actually talk? I said, you must have done a hell of a job, boy. You believe it, I really didn't have a voice. So what what was it like being on the set? Is there any stories you have from being on the Superman set? Oh God, there's so many stories, man. We, I mean, you you're talking about you're working with people for three years. You become like a family, you know. I mean, it was, and you're talking about a, a monster cast. Valerie Perrine was super. Sarah was young, but she was such a great. She, she's still a great friend. Turn Stamp. Terrence Stamp was the hottest actor in England when he was younger. The, the, what was the picture? Bud, Jeff, Bud, Kid Bud or something. He, he was a good looking kid boy. And then his brother ran, his brother managed the, the Who, the rock and roll group. And Terrence yeah. got into sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And then he went to India and he got Rolf and cleaned himself up. And that. And Superman was the first movie he did afterwards. They did Priscilla Queen of Death. Turns a great actor. But we had a lot of fun. I mean, it was, you know, it was watching um, Brando was, was unbelievable. Brando was, Brando was like Mitchell. You know, actors like that, when they come on a set, you can hear a pin drop. You know, everybody's paying strict attention. And, and, the, and they're class acts because they, they say hello to everybody in the morning and then they say goodnight at night when they're leaving. You know, and it's, uh, Young kids today don't do that. There's uh, some don't show up. They're late and all this. I, the older actors never missed a day. They never missed a. They never missed the time frame. They were supposed to be there at six o'clock in the morning. They were six. They were there. Even if they were out drinking all night, they'd be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They just. Uh, I mean, I, I was on. A, I mean, Robert liked to drink a little bit, and he put. If he came on a set, they just threw some visine in each one of his eyes and. <laughs> 
<laughs> he was up front and he never missed the line, never missed the cue. You know, was, uh, so working with people that, that were that skilled and that, you know, Hackman was a great actor. You know, just you, you learn from people like that. And it just got easier and easier and easier. So, was, but Mitchum was a great, I, you couldn't get a better t- teacher than Robert Mitchum. I mean, I was, when I was doing Farewell, My Lovely, we did it off the Goldman studio lot. And I was in the production office one morning and I come out and the editor was an Oscar winner. And he was editing the picture and his office was right by the gate as you leave. And he stopped me. He said, uh, you're Jack Wilder. I said, yeah. He said, you know, I'm sitting here cutting this picture. He said, this is the first movie you've ever done? I said, yeah, this is it. He said, well, I'll tell you what, kid. I, I've edited a lot of pictures. I'm sitting here editing these pictures. You're going to be a big star. So I went to Mitchum and I said, well, wow, man. I told what this guy told me. I said, maybe I should, you know, go to UCLA or go to some acting school and take some lessons or something like that. And he laughed like hell. He said, uh, they'll ruin you or you'll ruin them. He said, stick with me, kid, and you'll fart through silk. Don't worry about a thing. <laughs> yeah. Hey, just, just be yourself, me. right? You don't you don't have to put on a no I, I've noticed that a lot of a lot of shows and movies I no, see. You just take the character and just take it yourself and just, yeah. just whatever character you're gonna do, you just take that character, you just put him in you and you just be you. And it works out very well. I just, uh, my whole career, I just, uh, you know, people, and I've worked with some great actors, Jeffrey Bridges and, uh, and Jessica. Jessica, you knew she was going to be a star the day she walked on the set. But we did King Kong, and Jeff Bridges was a method actor. So it would take him a half hour to get all pumped up into what he was going to do. And, and, you know, just, just to make me laugh. It, because people get they get they get so worked up in, in the character they're going to do. And I, I just found that to be I didn't have to do that. So, have you found I, anybody to be hard to work with? Not really. No, no, never. I picked and choose everything that I did. A couple of things I wish I would have done. <clears throat> I had a picture with Eastwood. I would have liked to have done that. I, I turned down five pictures, and Richard Keel did all five. Made his career. I had a, a picture with uh, Gene Wilder and uh, Richard Pryor that we had a break in Superman.